Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about link performance tips. This is video 5 out of who knows how many. We have two points on our agenda today and uh, we're going to be talking about the skip function or method and then we're going to discuss .NET runtimes and differences in source code between these two runtimes. So let's uh, jump in um, and again, simple example, I have a list of 15 elements here and I'm going to stress test the link method. Uh, much for the skip method of link. So what I have here is I have the skip and we're gonna skip, um, you know, X number of times, this time around it's nine and we're just gonna do first or default and that's going to be it. So let's run it. So the performance, uh, this is debug, let's switch to release of course and the performance of this version is 17, 72 milliseconds, 65, around 60 to 70 milliseconds most of the time. Okay, so let's now see how we can implement our own version, um, which is faster. So what we can have, uh, we can, you know, accept a concrete implementation because you know that virtualization uh, is expensive and we're going to create a skip and removable which is a struct. This struct is optimized in a way that it doesn't have a lot of fields, um, you know, and it has its own enumerator, which is a struct again. And what we'll do, uh, apart from like aggressing inlining, of course, what we'll do is we're just going to set the index to the skip um, and we'll move from that point on. So it's by index. And uh, let's measure the performance of, uh, you know, this guy and the performance will be around 20 ish milliseconds to, to run it. So um, let's, you know, let's now see how the skip is implemented in link because um, it seems that it does not do a index based traversal. What it does is it, it will, you know, it's just probably doing, uh, you know, move next a bunch of times, but let's verify. So, um, this is our skip method and it will call a function called skip iterator and the skip iterator will get the enumerator and it will do a while loop and it will count down. So basically what it will do is it's, it's going to skip the number of elements, but it will go through each and every item in a loop. And once that's done, it will do a, you know, a small check if the count is, you know, greater than zero. And if it is, then we're just going to do move next and yield return. And yield return, it's a state machine that, you know, preserves the state and, you know, it will generate some code that will, um, you know, work correctly in a way. It will preserve state and return elements in a lazy way. Okay. So... Um, our implementation is obviously faster because we're using index traversal, but let's actually change the runtime because um, what we're doing here is we're not actually uh, working, uh, running this code on .NET Core, we're running this code on .NET Framework Old. And let's switch implementations and see uh, if something changes to the performance of Link. So let's use this version here and let's switch here and uh, everything is exactly the same let's run the link method again so it takes now roughly 20 ish to 25 milliseconds so that's pretty good because that's very very fast and in fact it's in line with our own implementation so now uh, you might you know ask yourself is there um, a reason to implement your own version of, you know, skip because this version is really good. Well, it depends because it depends on a, a, a couple of things. So first of all, uh, you can force it to run a bit faster, but um, it's not easy to do. But let's, you know, let's see. First of all, let's see how uh, the skip is implemented. So this time around, it will do a bunch of checks. Uh, it will check if it's not a partition, but uh, you know, it's not, it's a list. So we're going to go to skip iterator uh, method and we're going to create something that's called a list partition. And the list partition is a highly optimized data structure. 
where um, we're doing, you know, move next and we're doing the index traversal and also it's like optimized. These checks are really fast. Uh, they're specifically made to, to return ranges of values. So it's all good here. And, uh, you know, the performance actually tells us that it's well implemented. So um, let's try a couple of, you know, other things here. So let's let's do like the list version. So the list version will just do, um, it will take down I enumerable. It will check if we're not a list. And if we're a list, we're just going to yield with you on the list. So that should work, you know, not bad. That should be pretty okay in terms of performance. So let's just test if, we're, is it true? No, it's not because link takes 20 milliseconds. Let's run it again. Nope. Um, so there's a problem, but um, we can implement a better version of this probably without, you know, virtualization. So um, this is the version that is not virtualized and it has a, well, it's not virtualized in argument, but it's still virtualized here, but uh, we need that in order to be able to call first or default. But there's a surprising change here. So the old version of this method just used a for loop and just, just you know, yield return. But this version uses the same for loop, but the change is it's getting an enumerator still and it's moving that enumerator, although the indexes are off. So we're not even using this enumerator for anything. We're just moving it. And, you know, why is that? Uh, well, the thing is, in this version, if someone would modify the collection while you're doing that, then there would be no exception and you could, you know, introduce bugs, for example. While in this version, we're not going to introduce bugs because as soon as someone modifies the collection, um, we're going to throw an exception that the collection was modified and the uh, enumerator actually protects us, uh, you know, from this happening. So that's, that's good. It has a performance cost, but that performance cost is not really big if we're using a concrete, you know, type implementation. So we're not going to box. We're not going to do anything really scary here. And it, it you know, it's not really something that uh, we should consider being like, you know, slow or anything like that here because we're starting from the index anyway. So let's check the performance of uh, this version. So the last took 40 milliseconds. This time around, it takes around 40 milliseconds. So nothing was gained really. <clears throat> or uh, much rather if something was gained by the virtualization, uh, it was lost on get enumerator. So not really good, but uh, you know, let's try something else. Uh, this is our implementation that I showed you when we're doing classical uh, link with, with dot and classic. So the performance characteristic is absolutely, it's exactly the same. Um, let's run the same thing, but instead of, a, you know, using a struct, let's use a class. Um, it should have, and it has the same performance characteristics as well. So the question now is again, should we, can we even do better than link? Because it, it would seem that we can't even do better and should we do better? Because this is pretty good. And you know, that actually is determined on what our need is. If we need, you know, if that's all we need in terms of performance, then that's good. And we can have the benefit of having interfaces still. Um, that gives us better flexibility and uh, it's all good. But if we want to go faster, we could, you know, um, do something to that, uh, to our class and make it even faster, much rather struck. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can uh, modify this, inter uh, this a bit. So we, we're going to de-virtualize de everything. So input arguments and output arguments are going to be de-virtualized. And the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to de-virtualize the first or default. So because it accepts I enumerable, but now let's, let's make it so that it will accept our own skip enumerable. And the implementation is pretty simple. We're just doing a null check. We're doing, you know, we're doing a check if it's greater than zero. 
actually this should be return default but you know whatever uh, because it's first or default it shouldn't throw an exception but anyway let's move on um, so we're gonna get our enumerator and we're gonna move you know next and we're gonna return the current version and that's that's it that's that's all the operations that, that we're gonna do so it's not really different for from like the you know first or default implementation.net this does a bit more checks because it will check for partitions but other than that um, it's gonna check if we're a list and if we are the list then it's gonna return the first element and that that's that's all so it's even better in a way <clears throat> in terms of you know row performance but uh, we're not doing that check we're just using the skip and removal so um, and let's measure the performance this time around just to see how um, a complete the virtualization uh, helps us here. We can still do, uh, you know, link methods on this uh, because we still implement I enumerable. So we should be absolutely fine uh, to actually not, not on this guy, but on this guy. We still have access to all of the link methods so we can still chain, do execution chains, but um, you know, that's going to virtualize and uh, it depends on what we want to do. So, okay, let's run this guy. One millisecond. 1.2, yeah, it's around 1.5-ish millisecond, I guess. That's really fast. So when I first saw this, I thought that there's a bug in the code because it's impossible to have such performance because it's like 20 times the performance almost. And uh, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. So, uh, I still have doubts, but um, in order to verify this, um, we can have this this here enumerable, and we can change the implementation of this first or default to first or default custom two, and that version is going just to accept I enumerable, and that's going to be it. That's that's all of the changes that we've done, and we can compare uh, performance between these two. So let's run this this version, and um, it's kind of surprising but it took 20 milliseconds again so it's in line with all of these free implementations but if we're, we're going to remove that then it takes like one millisecond so um, but again that depends on uh, if you want to go that fast if you need to go that fast because there, this skipped version might be enough because it's really well implemented uh, under the hood, at least in .NET Core. So in classical .NET, well, you might uh, want to use something different, perhaps a version of, um, you know, maybe this sort of version or maybe this sort of version. Uh, it will be faster, it will be safe, and uh, it would return I enumerable. So that, that will be good. Okay, so let's do one last thing. Let's run uh, the benchmarks on, you know, benchmark.net because um, our tests are very simplistic and benchmark.net is going to give us better, uh, you know, results. Okay, so here's the results and, you know, our classical skip link um, is not the slowest, actually, it's, uh, you know, 27 nanoseconds. This is 79, 78, then uh, our custom enumerable, it's 40, 49, which is in line with link. And then we have a completely devirtualized version, which is really, really fast. And uh, yeah, so... The results are comparable to, you know, my uh, small function to measure performance. Uh, but, you know, units are different because this just measures a execution. But uh, they're most mostly in line, right? So, yeah. Um, so, that's all for today, really. Um, if I made a mistake, again, um, leave the you know leave a comment under the video um, like and subscribe if you think that video brought you some value 
and uh, yeah hope you hope to see you next time in a different video so thank you again and you know bye